Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and of course BeamNG Drive. So today we're building ourselves a wagon and it's going to be a special wagon. It's not going to have a four cylinder engine or even a V6 or even a V8. It's going to have a glorious V16 engine. Now why would I put a V16 engine into a wagon? Well, it's because I've gone absolutely mad. Now, I know there's never really been a cheap 16-cylinder car in history because that doesn't make any sense at all, and why would you do that? But we're going to do it today in the form of a concept car because obviously I don't think this car is going to be a real production car because it's going to be absolutely terrible, but we're going to do it anyways. So let's get started in the build. We've got this wagon in front of us. We're going to fit a very small V16 engine in here and try to get some good fuel economy and good performance out of it at the same time. Uh, uh, and this is going to be a front engine, uh, probably front wheel drive or all wheel drive, V16 wagon. And uh, I, I don't think this makes sense to build, and I don't know why you'd build this, but we're going to build it today. So anyways, uh, partial aluminum for the panel material because that seems like a reasonable thing to do. Monocoque chassis because, you know, this thing is a normal generic wagon with a V16 slapped into it. So I, I think I think monocoque's fine. Uh, now we can go for AHS steel because it's still, you know, a reasonably modern car. Front mounted transverse engine, we're going to go for Mac Pearson struts up front, and we'll for, you know what, we'll go for maybe like multi-link rear. So a 90 degree V16 is what we're doing right off the bat here, aluminum, 4 valve per cylinder, you know what, we might as well go for 5 valve per cylinder, because this thing is already absolutely insane, what's one more valve per cylinder, even though that's absolutely unrealistic. Now I contemplated going for like the biggest size V16 that'll fit in this car, so we can go for like something like, actually a 6 liter V16, oh my god. That's terrible! Why would you do this? Okay, we're going for a, a 1.6 liter V16 engine aluminum, so all aluminum, 1.6 liters. It's going to be quite small. We're going to go for forged internals because this thing's going to rev pretty high too. Twin turbo V16 because why not? Direct injection, we'll go for twin direct injection. Standard intake because it's still an economy car at its core. Premium fuel, we'll give it dual exhaust and we'll give it like pretty restrictive mufflers because I think this thing's going to be quite loud. Obviously, since um, the engine is so small, we can rev quite high. It's got a very low bore and stroke. We can rev it quite high, but I don't want to do that. So let's go to like a reasonable 8,000 RPM, which is not reasonable at all, but I still want to do it. All right, that seems pretty good. 160 torque, 150 horsepower, but we'll leave it for now. We might tune it a bit more for fuel economy later because it's only 23% thermal efficiency, 190, 149 horsepower is fine, 159 pound-feet of torque. So all-wheel drive, I'm not too sure why you'd have all-wheel drive, but you know, we're going to have it. We'll give it a dual clutch. And we'll give it maybe an LSD. We'll give it some sports compound tires because it's sporty. It's got to have some sort of sporty potential. 235s front and rear are honestly like all this thing needs. So I think 20s is too big. We'll give it 19s instead. Alloy wheels though. We'll give it vented discs. Four pots in the front. And we'll give it two pots in the rear. That sounds fine. Fully clad and cooling flaps to help with that fuel economy. And it's going to be a five-seater only with premium. And maybe like a nice, like a luxury infotainment. Like this is like, you know, it's showing off the tech. It's showing off all the technology. The 30 MPG, which is honestly pretty bad, that's actually pretty bad. Maybe we'll go for a bigger engine. You know what? We're going to go for a bigger engine. We're going to go for, uh, so we'll go for about a 3 liter V16 engine. Now that's going to give us a bit more power. 27 MPG is fine, but it does get 286 horsepower. It is all wheel drive, 5.9 seconds to 60, which is not bad. We'll give it an electric LSD. You know what? This is obviously a fancy car. It's going to be front biased though, and we'll give it shorter gears. Honestly, guys, who would have thought that a V16 wagon would just be so gosh darn expensive? We're at 55,000, which is getting there. I think 50 grand is, like, acceptable. Like, what if you go for steel? Like, we are getting quite porky, though. There's 55,000. Let's go for double wishbone in the rear. There's 54. What if we go for, like, torsion beam? There's 50,000. Okay, so $50,000 torsion beam. This is a... You know, it went from fancy to not fancy real quick, and I'm honestly a little bit upset. Um... This car is probably going to handle, like, dookie, but I, I think that was honestly what's, what's to have been expected anyways. This thing is almost all show no go. 280 horse, 290 torque is honestly kind of reasonable. I actually have no idea why this concept car would ever have existed. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like I know exactly why this concept car would have existed, because people just want to see a V16 wagon. Like, that's just what people want to see. So $50,000 is the price for this thing so far. It's got a ton of cargo volume, which, you know what? If you're shopping for a V16 car then cargo volume's pretty gosh darn important. 
So using a good old Google search, the 2012 Volkswagen Golf R, that's a 2 liter turbocharged engine, uh, that thing gets 22 combined MPG, which isn't isn't terrible, I feel like. Uh, it, it's a performance hatchback, it's got quite a bit of power for, for you know, the engine displacement size. Alright guys, so we've got more power uh, and torque than the Volkswagen Golf R, and we get better MPG as well. Um, this could also compete with something like an Audi RS4, or like an Audi or maybe RS6, etc., but obviously... Uh, different power levels than those, but better MPG than those, and a way cooler engine. So what we're going to do now is design this car in a time lapse, and it's going to be absolutely insane. And then we're going to hop into Beeman G Drive and see if this car drives terribly, because I've got a feeling it's it's not going to be good. It's heavy, it doesn't have too much power, and it's got a terrible suspension setup. So sit back, relax, guys, and of course, I hope you enjoy. And we are starting the build from my V16 all-wheel drive turbocharged sporty kind of fuel economical kind of hatchback. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Uh, the first thing I usually do is start off by shaping out the front end with my reverse dog tape and other fixtures as well. I want to have this sort of V-shape indentation going from one side of the front face to the other. Uh, so I've cut out the front end already, the top end of the front end, and I've cut out the bottom, and I'm just sort of using bumper bars and stuff to sort of make it work a little better, uh, using some light bars to cut out the inside of the headlights itself. I'll leave a link down below so you guys can design cars similar to how I design them. I've added two headlights now. I am tweaking the front end a bit, adding these sort of grill bars and stuff. I am rearranging the front end just a bit, making it a bit smaller because it is too big. And I do go ahead and I think make it a little smaller later on, but it's pretty good for now. Um, so I'm making this sort of split front grill, which I do change because I think it looks just weird. It looks like I've got two massive nostrils similar to BMW's modern cars, which look terrible. Um, so I go ahead and just delete that and have this big sort of open grill, adding the Starzashi badge sort of in the middle. The grill is pretty much done now, adding a bit of a hood ball, adding some fog lights down below and I'm just sort of trimming the uh, bottom of the front fascia that's got to get finished down using some light bars adding some quick turn signals adding some glass and basically what I do now is just go over everything and sort of relayer the front end after I trim out the bottom front fascia so I trim bottom front fascia is done I go on add a little more detail in the front and then I go ahead and change the layering just so everything flows a little bit nicer in the front fascia of the car adding some more bars to the lights uh, making sure the headlights function properly basically spending some time doing that and adding a little bit of trim on the bottom of the car I change the car to white finally after I kept it on leather for so long, adding some windshield wipers, some black trim on the side, some uh, roof bulges because you gotta fit your racing helmet into this concept car for some reason. The taillights have been cut out, I added a rear diffuser, a rear wing, and I'm slowly just tweaking the rear and now adding some sort of uh, rear diffuser sort of indentations and whatnot to the side, or to the back of the car, sorry. Uh, I've tweaked the rear spoiler a little bit, and now I'm tweaking the rear lights. I'm actually shaping out the inside of the rear lights. I want to have them similar to the front, just having these two circle projectors, uh, sort of LED rear light bulbs, because that seems reasonable, and it matches the front end pretty good, adding one more light bar. The back taillights, actually, it took some inspiration from the Volkswagen Golf, uh, the 2012-2013 and so on model, adding some rear badging for the car's name, and in front of us, is the 2012 Starzashi Radical 4WR Proto. Like I said, finished in front of us is the 2012 Starzashi Radical 4WR-16 Proto. That is a mouthful of a name. Uh, this car is pretty subdued in looks, honestly. It is a pretty plain Jane looking car. It definitely has some Volkswagen Golf inspiration. I took a bit of inspiration from the Scirocco, the Golf. Uh, I took inspiration from my previous Starzashi vehicle, which looks like this, which is a bit of Mitsubishi. So it took, it's taken a bit of pretty much every design that I had, uh, and it looks pretty boring, which is the point. It is a boring economy wagon that has been hopped up to have a V16 twin turbo engine, so a high performance engine or higher performance engine than its competitors for sure. Um, and yes, yeah, so the car is finished. It's got these, you know, similar dual projector headlights, similar to my previous Starzashi vehicle like that. So we got those. We've got our V16 badge. I think the front end is nice. I think it's clean. It's nice. It's not too crazy, but it's still pretty gosh darn boring to be fair. And that's okay. This is an economy car with some performance roots dug in. Okay. The side, it, it's, it's very basic. We got just some trim on the side, some door handles and mirrors. It's very basic. This car is not a showy car. There are uh, differences to the wheels and tires. So the tire sidewall is quite a bit bigger. My thought process here was, you know, this car is a 4WR car, which stands for uh, four-wheel drive 
World Rally. So it's basically a rally car uh, designation for the for for the Starzashi brand. Except the difference is it's not a rally car at all. It's just a souped up wagon basically with the sort of rally badging. It's got rally inspired tires. They are quite thick. They are quite tall though, which I think fits the wagon. You know, the wagon is definitely frumpy. Look in the back has this big wing. We got the radical badging back here. It's very simple to make. This is this is a concept car. There's not, you know, it's not a production car currently. Uh, we have these, you know, quite low rear taillights with the, you know, similar to the front taillight setup. Basically, these massive rear exhaust, and we just have a rear little reverse light. I have a feeling it's going to drive either really bad or really decent. So we're going to hop into Beep and G Drive and see how it drives. I want to take this thing on a bit more of a rally track. So I think actually I'm going to change the tires to medium compound. And we're going to take it on a rally track, and then we're going to take it on a street track and see how it drives. I'll see you guys in BMG in just a sec. Alright guys, so we are in BMG Drive with the Starzashi Radical 4WR Proto. And we are in, I think this is the uh, Small Island USA sort of mixed circuit stage 1. So it's, uh, it's a mix of of some asphalt and some dirt so it's a decent rally course it's quite short uh we're gonna hop into this real quick then we'll do a other track test to see if this thing drives well the car looks actually pretty good in beam g it looks a little plain but like you know everything flows together pretty nice i think the design overall is is quite decent uh so we're gonna do this track and we will see how it is let's go um let's go third person actually so third person so it's all wheel drive we've got medium compound tires but it's still not gonna be uh the most traction car at the beginning because we don't have too much things on dirt but it's, it should be decent this thing is a bit of a boat, though. It's about 3,900 pounds, so it's quite heavy. I honestly totally forget this track. I totally forget this track. There's a turn here. Oh, gosh. That's it. Okay. So, it, 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 it... I'm gonna try to drift here. It drives pretty boaty. I'm gonna sit back to the gamer lean here. In my chair. I need to take note of this. Take note, guys. The suspension is too stiff. I tuned it for, like, track, uh, like, uh, paved service track testing. Not, like, a rough gravel and mixed service bumpy testing. Because this thing, this course is quite bumpy. Yeah. I'm trying to drift these corners, but drifting these corners is, is difficult, for, for sure. Oh, there's this bales, yep. We lost the mirror. Yeah, we don't need that anyways. Come on, drift. Okay, it doesn't like drifting that much. If this gets LSD, it's doing okay. But it's not the best. Like, sub one minute is a, a reasonable time. It's a reasonable time. It's actually my second best time ever. Uh, and last time I played this was March. So... I suspect this is actually one of my best times ever. It had a good grip on the dirt, but on the paved surface, it was a little bit weird, especially because the track was bumpy. Let's hop in to a street test and see if this thing drives on the street. Next up, we are in the West Coast USA map. This is the short race circuit. The car, again, looks pretty good. The little mustache in the front looks kind of weird in BMG. It looks better in automation, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay, there is 0 to 60 test on the top left, but that's not going to be our accurate 0 to 60. Um, we spun a lot there. I think once we get into the prep drag circuit next, which is what we're going to do, I think it'll be a little better. Okay, so it's got some plow. I tried to, uh, rotate the rear end over by using my handbrake, but it was not the best. Obviously, this thing is a lot heavier than a golf bar. Oh, yeah, it, it, it understeers. It plows into these corners. I've got a torsion rear end. A torsion bar rear end. So, it, that's that's what you get for having a... I think it's torsion bar. Um, and, yeah, so the suspension setup is not great on this thing. This car, we, we did cut corners because this car is so expensive. <laughs> you know, this kind of reminds me of, like, some sort of Audi car. Just because I know Audis tend to understeer... Uh, at least the older ones, for sure. The newer ones are better, but the older ones understeered a, a good bit. And there's a lot of front plow. Oh, oh, we made it. I thought we were hitting the wall for sure there. That was terrifying. Oh my God. All right. Uh, one minute and 36.6 seconds. So again, it's decent. It's decent. This car only has 280 horsepower. Uh, it does have four wheel drive. It does have turbos. So there is a bit of lag, 
So today, I think we're going to finish off in the drag strip. I'll see you guys there. We're going to test the car 0 to 100 kilometer an hour time, so 0 to 62, as well as the quarter mile time, and we'll finish off there. Right now, I'm going to guess, before we go there, I'm going to guess it's going to do a 4.70 to 60, and I'm going to guess a 13.5 in the quarter mile. Lastly, the single most important race ever is the drag race. Nothing is more important than a drag race. Nothing shows a car's performance more than the drag race, obviously. Uh, this car, it should do okay. So like I said, 4.7 is my guess. I have not tested it once, I promise. 4.7 and 13.5 or so in the quarter mile. So let's check it out. So we'll take it off. Take off traction control. So I'll try and sport. Okay, we're going to try one more time. 5.5, I'm not happy with that. We'll try it again. We'll try it in manual. Five point five. Ooh, not good. That is not a great zero to one hundred. That's like that's about the golf bar actually. That's around the golf bar of the time. But thirteen point eight quarter mile. That's not bad. That's not a terrible quarter mile. Um, it definitely struggles for traction. Um, to hundred kilometers an hour. But that just might be us. Uh, kind of driving bad or. It could be uh, us having the medium compound tires instead of the sports compound, which definitely would have given us an improved 0 to 100. I think under perfect conditions, we probably could have gotten uh, maybe around 5. Maybe around 5. You know what? So uh, I didn't get it right. Um, but the quarter mile was pretty close, 13.7. But before we finish off, I want to give a huge shout out to my channel members. Thanks so much to everyone who supported the channel financially to keep this uh, ship running. This is my full-time job. And I appreciate you guys. Uh, big thanks to Ruben for being a big boy turbo. You're awesome, man. And I love you. Check out his channel. Link down below. I want to give a huge shout out to my quad turbo members, Childish Sin and DD, man. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. Thanks so much to the twin turbo members. And thanks to everyone else as well. If you guys want to become a member of the channel, you guys get some cool perks. Link down below. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And of course... As always, I'll see you next time.